Hi, welcome to this Stair Tailored. We are focused on word problem instruction, and right now we are going to be focusing on the change schema and what the change schema means. I'm Sarah Powell from the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm super glad you're here. Now when we think about schemas, there are three schemas that we regularly see that are additive, which means students will use those to solve addition and subtraction type of word problems. We also have three schemas that are multiplicative, which means we use those in multiplication and division areas. We have stair tailoreds for each of these schemas, and right now we're going to focus on the change schema. So what is the change schema? In a change schema, we have one amount, and something happens to change that amount. So we have situations where there's an increase with the amount. So think about this story. There were 23 passengers on the bus, 13 more got on, how many passengers are on the bus now? So this story was always about passengers and the amount of passengers changed. We also have this story. There were 23 passengers, then some people got on the bus, now there are 36 passengers on the bus. How many people boarded the bus at the museum? So you can see here we had some passengers, that amount changed to a new end amount, and here in this story, our job is to figure out the change in the number of passengers. Then we also have change problems like this one. There were some passengers on the bus. Then 13 passengers got on. Now there are 36 passengers on the bus. How many were on the bus to start with? So in this story here, we have a change in the number of passengers. It's an increased change. And our job is to figure out the start amount. So in a change problem, we have one amount, and that amount can increase Sometimes you're asked about the end, sometimes you're asked about the change, and other times you're asked about the start. But change problems don't always just increase, there are change problems that also decrease. So look at these stories. There were 23 passengers, 13 got off the bus at the museum. How many are on the bus now? Again, one amount, and that amount is changing. Here, there were 23 passengers on the bus, then some passengers got off, and now there's 10 passengers on the bus. How many passengers got off the bus? So talking about the change. And in this story here, we have some passengers, 13 passengers get off the bus, now there are 10. How many passengers were on the bus to start with? So here, you're asked about the start amount. In all these stories, we have a start amount, then there's a change. That change can either be an increase or a decrease to a new end amount. Now once we realize a problem is a change problem, we can use the change equation to help organize the information from the problem. And the change equation would be the start amount plus or minus the change equals the end amount. We also have some graphic organizers that we can use. Here's a nice graphic organizer. Notice you can see the change. And also the same thing in this graphic organizer. You see the change occurring over time. Now to help students cue in to change problems, you can ask a question. And I also like to use gestures when I ask this question. And because a change of problem is one amount, I'm only gonna hold up one hand. Notice I put my other hand down to the side. So in a change problem, we ask, does an amount increase or decrease? So it's one amount that increases or decreases. Now I'm gonna keep that question in mind as we solve this word problem. So I see a word problem, which is a mix of numbers and words, and anytime I see a word problem, I'm gonna use my attack strategy to just guide me through the word problem. And the attack strategy that I like to use is UPS check. And I'm gonna write it here to help me remember that first I need to understand the problem, then I'm gonna make a plan, then I'm gonna solve the problem, and then I'm gonna go back and check my work. We understand the problem by reading it. At the beginning of June, a bean plant was three and eight tenths inches tall. By the end of, or the beginning of July, the plant was six and four tenths inches tall. How many inches did the bean plant grow during June? So in this story, I'm focused on how the inches of the the, the, the inches that the bean plant grew. That's surprisingly hard to say. So I'm gonna go ahead and underline inches right here to help me focus in on any of the numbers that deal with inches. I've got a pretty good understanding of this word problem. I'm gonna go ahead and check off the use so that I don't need to use it again. Now I'm gonna make a plan. I can ask myself some of the other schema questions. So I could ask, is this the total problem where parts are put together for a total? Is this a difference problem where amounts are compared for a difference? Or is this a change problem where one amount increases or decreases? 
Hmm. Let me think about this one and I'll be right back. All right, let's think about, is this a change problem where we have an amount that increases or decreases? It is a change problem because I have this bean plant and then the bean plant grows. So I'm figuring out the increase in the growth of the bean plant. So I'm gonna solve this as a change problem. Let's use our change graphic organizer here. And because the bean plant is growing, it's increasing in height, I'm gonna use a, um, a plus sign. If the bean plant was shrinking, which is not really that possible, I would use a minus sign to show the decrease in the height of the bean plant. All right, we've got our plan. Now let's set up and solve this problem. All right, at the beginning of June, the bean plant was three and eight inches, eight, three and eight tenths inches tall. All right, so that tells me the start amount of the bean plant. I'm gonna go ahead and check that off so I don't use that number again. And I'm gonna write three and eight tenths right here under the start amount. Now, by the beginning of July, the bean plant was six and four tenths inches tall. So let's see, um, that's kind of the end amount. That's how much the bean plant is now. So that's six and four tenths inches tall. The question is, how many inches did the bean plant grow? So we have to figure out the change in height of the bean plant. Now to solve this, I'll go ahead and put in my signs, and now I have to think about how I could solve this problem. I could start with three and eight tenths and add up to six and four tenths. I could also start with six and four tenths and subtract three and eight tenths. And today, that's what I choose to do. So I'll do my math here, and I see that this bean plant grew two and six tenths, but what would be a good label for that? two and six tenths inches. It's one of the reasons we underline those things at the beginning because they come back to help us later on. So I've solved this problem, now let's check the work. How could I do this? I could add three and eight tenths plus two and six tenths and make sure that equals six and four tenths. I could subtract six and four tenths minus two and six tenths to make sure that that equals three and eight tenths. Lots of different ways to check the work. But now you can see how we use our attack strategy combined with the change schema, which I used with the uh, change graphic organizer here, to solve this change problem. Now give me a minute, I'm going to erase this, I'm going to make it blank once again, and we're gonna solve another type of change problem. All right, now let's look at this change problem. I see a mix of numbers and words, so that means I'm going to use my attack strategy. I always like to write my attack strategy right here, so I remember it. I got a pretty squeaky marker here today, so let me change that out, find maybe a non-squeaky marker. Um, so I'm going to understand, plan, solve, and check this problem. Let's understand the problem by reading it. Pablo goes to the stamp show. On the first day, Pablo starts with 744 stamps. He buys 27 stamps from his friend, then he sells 139 stamps. What is the total number of stamps that Pablo has after the first day of the stamp show? So what are we focused on in this story? I think we are focused on stamps. So I'm gonna go ahead and underline that stamps to help us really focus in on the numbers that deal with stamps. I have to figure out the total number Pablo has after the first day, so I'm kind of saying that to myself. Now we need to make a plan. We're gonna make a plan by structure or schema. So is this a total problem where parts are put together for a total? Is this a difference problem where amounts are compared for a difference? Or is this a change problem where one amount increases or decreases? Well, this isn't a, a change problem, but it's a different type of change problem. It's a change problem that has multiple changes in it, and that's totally fine. And in fact, starting in fourth grade, a lot of change problems that we see do have these multiple changes. So I am going to solve this as a change problem, and I gotta figure out how I'm gonna set up this equation. So I know Pablo starts with some stamps, and then he buys some. So if he buys some, that means there's an increase in Pablo's stamps. So there's a change in his stamps that's an increase, but then Pablo, he sells some. So then there's a decrease in the change of his stamps, and our job is to figure out the new end amount of stamps that Pablo has. So it's okay to have a change equation like this. You can have two increases or two decreases. You might have even three changes. All of those situations work with this change schema. All right, we've got our plan. We're solving it as a change problem. 
So let's go ahead and plug in the information. Uh, let's see, on the first day, he starts with 744 stamps. So 744 tells me how many we start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that underneath my start amount. Then he buys 27 stamps. Remember we talked about that, then increases his stamps. So that was our first change. And then he is super smart and he sells some of his stamps. So we're gonna go ahead and put that, that's the second change in Pablo's stamps. And so now we have to figure out the end amount of stamps. So I'm gonna mark that with a question mark. We could mark that with an S or X or um, a line, lots of different ways to mark our missing information. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, repeat my signs in here. And now I have to do some math. So I'm going to do this uh, in steps to help me organize my work. So first I'm gonna do 744 plus 27. There we go, that is 771. Then I need to subtract, I've got another squeaky marker, all the squeaky markers today, 771 minus 139. Uh, here I have to do a little regrouping. And so, question mark is 632. But what were we talking about in the story? We were talking about stamps, it's right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and write stamps to help me solve that problem. So how many stamps did Pablo have after the first day of the stamp show? He had 632 stamps. Now how do I check my work? I could uh, do 632 and make sure that's equal to uh, this part of the, this expression right here. Um, and there's other ways that I could check my work. The thing that I want you to emphasize is that students go back and, and think about, is this a reasonable answer? And so they have checked their work. So when we solve these change problems, we combine our attack strategy with the change schema to help us understand how to set up and solve this change problem. Thank you so much for tuning into this Stair Tailored. Check out some of our others where we talk about the other word problem schemas.